Hey, welcome to Highly Questionable. Let's take your homeboy's daddy to work day. So Poppy's here. We got Frank Isola from the New York Daily News. Who's on the show, Frank? JJ what? Ranked <laughs> in the top 100 for 2016? No chance. Oh, we got disagreement. Let's roll. All right, the Cavs right to stick with their strategy in game three. All right, it seems difficult to imagine that the Cavaliers would want to keep doing whatever the hell it was they were doing in California when they were getting their brains beat in. But... LeBron talked to the media today, as did other guys for the Cavs, and he basically said, look, we're not going to try to slow the game down. Ty Lue said they're not going to change their rotation, probably. J.R. Smith is probably going to still wind up being the starter, and they'll still be trying to play at this pace because they like to play fast. They just think they need to play a little bit better. I can see where they're coming from because a lot of what happened had to do with how well they played, not the style that they played, but you can play the best that you want to at that style. You're probably going to lose. Yeah, it's not about playing faster. It's about playing better, and they cannot keep pace with the Golden State Warriors. The Warriors want to get out and run. That is not LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers. If you go back to game one in that second half and that third quarter, they tried to slow it down. They were better. They need J.R. Smith with three lousy points in two games to play a lot better, make some shots. Tristan Thompson, 8.8 rebounds in the series, not good enough. Two role players for them need to play a lot better because you tried to play fast, LeBron got you a triple-double, and you still got blown out. They need to slow it down. I will say this, though. If you do decide that you want to go fast, you can go faster without necessarily having to shoot so damn fast, right? <laughs> like, yeah, go ahead and get down there, but if you don't have a good shot, chill out, Kyrie. I got another piece of advice. LeBron, in the second half, more than six shots. You, you went way too slow in the second half of game two. What are you, what are you over there doing, Kung Fu? I'm praying. I'm praying <laughs> that the cap, they, they keep using the same strategy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please, God. That's not yes. nice. <laughs> this is your friendly <laughs> reminder, by the way. They're trying to win a championship while depending on J.R. Smith. I mean, you can do that once, but doing it twice? Is the Stanley Cup final more compelling than the NBA finals? Okay, hockey guy. You know the super hockey fan. <laughs> Mr. Why don't y'all talk about hockey more on ESPN guy? This is the sort of thing that he lives for because that hockey guy loves to talk about how their playoffs are better than the NBA playoffs. And it's a great year for you to do that because the NBA playoffs have been lopsided and it's been pretty exciting in the NHL. And they finally got the basketball guy they needed to state their case. And it's Charles Barkley. So explain to the people your love affair of the Stanley Cup playoffs during the NBA playoffs. Well, because they're unpredictable. Like, there's no person thought that Nashville Predators was going to be in the finals. They played the Blackhawks in the first round of the series as number eight seed. They were the last team to get in the playoffs. I love the unpredictability. I, 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 like, I know I'm, I'm a little drunk, number one. Be unpredictable. That's you're unpredictable. Uh, but I'm saying there's nobody thought that Nashville Predators are going to be playing for the Stanley Cup Finals, right. and it's pretty amazing. And number one, I want to thank my friends Jr. Jeremy Ronick and Wayne Gress who says you got to come to a game in Nashville. It's unbelievable. I ju I'm just glad to be here because the NBA playoffs have not been great, but the Stanley Club Cup playoffs have been amazing. First of all, thank you, Chuck, for saying you were a little drunk so I didn't have to recklessly <laughs> speculate on that. Thank you for closing the gap in that way. Now, he's right, though. The Stanley Cup playoffs are always more unpredictable and because there are fewer scores, there's more tension that you wind up there. But is it actually more compelling? Here's one thing the NBA playoffs have. LeBron James, the most compelling thing in sports for the better part of the last 15 years. Yeah, unpredictability? Let's see. The Capitals are going to finish with the best record not get to a conference final. Sidney Crosby is going to be the best player in the NHL. He's in the Stanley Cup final again. And a hot goalie, in this case, Pekka Rene, is dominating a series. But I do appreciate this about Charles Barkley. That's what he stuck with, giving his hockey analysis. Look at the goaltender for the Predators, Pekka Rene, the best player, Sidney Crosby. So for all you NHL guys out there who want to know what's going on in the NBA, just say this. Kevin Durant's been unbelievable, but watch out for that LeBron guy. He could still dominate a series. And again, how much more compelling do you want it than LeBron James and Kevin Durant? At least until it's a 3-0 series. Then? Well, you know, there is nothing more compelling than uh, seeing LeBron getting destroyed. I'm not showing up for the press conferences after the game, you know. And probably he's going to say pretty soon, I need one more playmaker. I'm not getting the yeah. calls when I'm going right into the basket. You watch, you watch. You got him figured out. Keep in mind, that was a regular season's worth of storylines, and I found myself <laughs> compelled. 
Do you agree with Las Vegas bookmakers that the Warriors would be favored over the 72-10 Bulls? Yeah, apparently they're a little bored at the betting houses because they're actually trying to come up with this a point spread for if this year's Warriors played against the 72 win 1995-96 Chicago Bulls. The Warriors are like an eight-point favorite in that game, by the way. And these comparisons are so great because you can't ultimately get anywhere because all the teams came up playing against diff on different rules and everything else. I just want one of y'all to go tell Michael Jordan right now that they're an eight-port underdog. You go tell Michael Jordan that right now. You know what Michael Jordan going to do? He's going to take them high-waisted jeans, and he's going to rip them off, and y'all going to go out back and hoop right then and there. And remember, too, they're saying that's at a neutral court. I'll take the Bulls at Oracle against the Golden State Warriors because I'm from a generation just like Poppy. We do not pick against Michael Jordan ever because Michael Jordan in a clutch situation. Remember something else. Scottie Pippen? He could just about guard everybody on the court, but you know what we're all looking forward to. Draymond Green, Dennis Rodman. First one to five technicals wins, meaning that Dennis Rodman will get right under Draymond Green's skin. Of course the Warriors will be favored. The Bulls are coached by this guy. <laughs> oh, there he is. There's Phil Jackson sitting like there on the subway. I like the sneakers. He's on his way to the garden. A little yeah. late, but he's on his way. Yeah, you might not know this, but that is the front office executive that runs one of the most high-profile teams in the NBA. And he has a hired chauffeur. Do LeBron and KD owe it to their fans to release the song they recorded during the lockout? All right, our man Steven Jackson did a mixtape that was called What's a Lockout? That was probably entitled <laughs> Uh, a Lockout. But anyway, we have heard now that Kevin Durant, who does beats in his spare time, did a studio session with LeBron James, and they did a song together. People are saying that the song is pretty good. Should they release it? Would you want your non-professional rapping to be released to the world? Because all we're going to do is join you. Like, there's nobody here that's trying to do legitimate music criticism. All we want to do is clown, and clown we would. I wouldn't care if they put out suck MCs. We're still going to clown it. <laughs> and as you know, both of these guys have come out and said, I'm the best player in the world. I hope that's the name of the title track. Also, Paul Pierce claims that Durant is the better rapper, a better rapper than LeBron James. <laughs> I ain't buying it, though. To me, I've seen LeBron at that concert. Poppy, what was, what was that? Future. That's right. He was at Future's concert singing up a storm. I think LeBron would be the better rapper. I want to hear LeBron, not so much Durant. I have a diss track for LeBron. A diss track? Yeah. Oh, boy. Yo, 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 it is Poppy on the beat. You know, I don't cramp up when they turn up the heat. You That's think you're the king, but you're just a pawn. Sorry, loser, but you ain't Mike Jordan. Oh. You sent me pizza <laughs> and I ate it, but I'm still a hater. You're overrated. Ooh. You'll never be like dumb waiters. Papi, I'll f you, LeBron. Wow. <laughs> it's like ether, except <laughs> not. Chances Ohio State lost a better coach than Thad Mata. Yeah, out of nowhere, yesterday we heard that Ohio State was having a news conference with Gene Smith, the athletic director and basketball coach Thad Mata, and there they shared that each side had agreed that Thad Mata would no longer be the head coach at Ohio State, though it really sounds like Ohio State decided they needed a new head coach and Thad Mata went along with it, because how can you get in the building if your key card doesn't work anymore? <laughs> now, can they find a better coach? There's a good chance. They won with Thad Mata there when great players showed up. The question is, can you get somebody who gets great players to show up because Thad Mata had struggled in that department. But this is a really good job that should attract really good candidates. I just don't know who you hire in June. And Gene Smith, the athletic director, said it's time. So that told you he was ready to make a move. And when you make a coaching change in college basketball in June, all the best coaches are gobbled up. That tells me that Gene Smith must have a pretty good idea who he eventually wants to bring in as head coach. Now, Thad Mata had done a great job. Two Final Fours, won 337 games at Ohio State. But lately, he wasn't getting those blue-chip recruits. Even Mr. Basketball in Ohio, Luke Kennard, ended up going to Duke. So he wasn't bringing those players. I just wonder what their relationship with LeBron is going to be like now. LeBron's got a locker in that Ohio State basketball facility. I wonder if they're going to get rid of LeBron, too. I tend to doubt it. By the way, I'm a little bit confused, Ohio State. Like, if you're going to do this, do this before Indiana fires their yeah. coach and then hires Archie Miller, the dude who probably would have walked over Coles to get your job in the first place. Ring, ring, ring. Hello? Who is this? Oh, Fred Hoiberg. Oh, boy. Oh. Fred. What's up, Fred? <laughs> what? You want to be considered for that job? <laughs> really? A long-term contract? But I thought that you were going to go after the Bulls. No. You don't give a <laughs> about the Bulls anymore. All right. All right. 
I'll put the word, good word for you, Fred. Yeah, okay, yeah, you know, okay. It's, yeah, stick it out for the time being, Fred. We'll see you. Bye. <laughs> Let me tell you, Fred Hoiberg wants a new job. I can't imagine the glowing letter of recommendation half of Chicago would write for him. Whatever it took, take him. Is J.J. Watt right that he should not be on the list of the top 100 players in the NFL? Well, apparently, J.J. Watt took a break for rehabbing or chopping wood or whatever the yeoman activities he does in his spare time to see that the NFL Network does their top 100 players list, and he's on the list. And he's got a problem with it because he only played three games last year. Now, I feel like you could take it as an honor if you wanted to, but oh, no, no, no. He's got wood to chop, and that wood will not get chopped if he's not motivated, and he needs to be motivated by not making a list like that. Here's my only thing. You were the best defensive player in the league the last time we saw you healthy. I can't blame anybody for thinking you're still in the top 100, even sight unseen. Hey, there's nothing wrong with being humble, but J.J. Watt also happens to be right. He played in three games. He had 1.5 sacks for the season. He didn't average that. That was for the entire season. So 35, I'm sorry, he doesn't belong there. Adrian Peterson, who played in three games, averaged 1.9 rushing yards, also made the list. But at least he was all the way down at 98. That's where J.J. Watt should be, 98, 198, somewhere in that area. And he's right about J.J. Watt being so humble. You know the first person to tell you about how humble J.J. Watt is? J.J. Watt. <laughs> Coming up next on Highly Questionable. Why would you do that? Okay, so he just shoots down this thing, and boom. Wow. wow. I would hate to see the bottom of his feet, because I can't imagine what you have to do to make them rugged enough to feel comfortable about such a maneuver. Like, right now, you know this isn't going to work. Guess who doesn't know it? The guy driving. Everyone yeah. else who decided, hey, you know, keep going a little bit further, a and little bit further. Draw straws? Wow, this has gone better than expected. Time to play the game that cannot believe how well my son's road game work. Do you question? Mm, you give us topics and events, and we question them. <laughs> Do you question if this requires a lit skill? We are going to Jamaica. This place is called Pirates Island Water Park. Apparently, these are the pirates people come to see. I don't know if they're actually pirates, but they're the attraction. Whoa, whoa. Wait, 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 wait. Why would you do that? Okay, so he just shoots down this thing, and boom. Wow. wow. I would hate to see the bottom of his feet, because I can't imagine what you have to do to make them rugged enough to feel comfortable about such a maneuver. Yeah, hold on, run this thing back again. I, I just need to see this, because if these guys are the attraction, I feel like the rest of your water slides must not be very good, because I can't believe that someone would do that or try that, but that can't be the reason that I'm showing up to the damn place. He could stand on water. He could slide across it. Also, how much is he getting paid oh. for this? Because I feel pretty confident they made him sign a waiver. Like, I don't <laughs> think there's a workman's comp case after that if he gets hurt. It's a lot more fun when these things, they go wrong. That is true. Right, that is true. With the assist. Oh, oh, have boy. you seen this, Frank? Oh! Boom! Oh, <laughs> what I love about these videos is someone always says something like, my God, oh, oh. nobody ever puts down the camera. That's right. Cool. That's four to six weeks, easily. <laughs> Do you question whether this is worth a try? They tell us this is from Brazil, and it is a truck boat situation. Okay, oh, oh boy. so there's a truck. So this is their plan to get it onto the boat, uh, is just put some sticks down? Who thinks this is going to work? This is only worth a try if you're trying to run insurance fraud. Like, right now, you know this isn't going to work. Guess who doesn't know it? The guy driving. Everyone yeah. else who decided, hey, you know, keep going. A little bit further. A and little bit further. Straws? Wow, this has gone better than expected. Is he gonna... Is it? 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 You gotta mash the gas, man. Like, no. now's not the time for nerves. Uh-oh. Now everyone's an expert telling them what to do. That's right. You get behind the wheel and do it. What grade did you get in physics, huh? Hold on, I think, we, I, no. think, I think we're almost there. No. Uh, here. Look. Uh, hey! Uh, I knew he was going to make it. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> who, who are we to judge, number one? And number two, shout out to all those people who were out there with their cameras. I know how disappointed you were when that exactly. truck went on that boat because we just lived it right here on television. You know, to be fair, it really doesn't always work, you know? Oh, boy. 
They can get a truck to do it. They can get a bike to do it. Yeah, but not everybody has no knows as much about putting these things together. <laughs> Is this how they put equipment on the Titanic, just like this? Oh. <laughs> Shout out to a man in green who landed on solid ground. <laughs> Do you question whether this car is going in the right direction? Whereabouts? Unknown. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Hey, shout out to the dude who saw it coming, right? This is like slow motion from a James Bond movie, I think. Now, look at the middle car. Talk about good timing. Like, you could get distracted by the one in reverse. The middle <laughs> dude in the middle car, I don't know if he just had a feeling, whatever it was. But there he goes. And at, like, at first, I thought he was covering his head at the end. Like, check him out. As he breaks out over here, I didn't know if he was afraid that something was going to, like, fall from the earth. Nope, he just watched his car get uh, smashed like Monster Truck Rally, and now he's got to explain this to someone. That was the I have no insurance look. Yeah, liability only taking so far. Coming up next on my son's TV show. So I don't know if you saw the thing on Twitter about your statue. Uh, you know, I don't pay attention to that stuff. Yeah, I figured that. Me either. A drink, Mr. Bryant? Yeah, I'll have a, uh, a vodka martini. How many olives would you like? 81. <laughs> 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 really? Highly questionable is broadcast from the Clevelander Hotel on beautiful South Beach, Miami. Time to play the game that will eat just about anything if you put maple syrup on it. See? Oh no. You tell us what to watch <laughs> on TV tonight. We'll tell you if we're intrigued tonight. You got three days to get the head knot thing right. You out here, you better give him a concussion. On Jack Del Rio's Twitter feed, Raiders OTAs. Interesting place to go find that. I would generally not be intrigued, but I'm told that there's Marshawn Lynch footage. There he is. Oh. Problem is, oh the guy that's on the other side, like, I don't really know if that dude's a football player or he's just here on football fantasy camp. The roster's pretty big this time of year. You got a little more psh, than I expected, though. Okay, not bad. Frank, are you intrigued? No, I'm not. And I'm tired of organized team activities. Can we just call it practice like the rest of the free world calls it? Also, Marshawn Lynch didn't play last season. The year before he was hurt. Call me in August, September. Not in June. Not intrigued. <laughs> All right, Papa, you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. Well, listen, what the hell is going on there? You know, they were not wearing pads and they were not tackling. You know, that's, that's a lot of <laughs> You know what I mean? What is Jack trying to do? <laughs> not, uh, not get a grievance from the union. That is what he's trying to do by having them out there with no pads on. It's that's, rules. That's what they mean by OTA. <laughs> on ESPN, Jalen versus everybody. I am intrigued by this. Shout out to Jalen Rose and your agent. Apparently he's doing yes. boss work. This is supposed to be like a Curb Your Enthusiasm type of program. What do we have? Jalen. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, Cole, how you doing? How retirement treating you? It's great, man. It's great. Just, uh, you know, a little writing, a little investing. Nice. So I don't know if you saw the thing on Twitter about your statue. Uh, you know, I don't pay attention to that stuff. Yeah, I figured that. Me either. A drink, Mr. Bryant? Yeah, I'll have a, uh, a, a vodka martini. How many olives would you like? 81. <laughs> <laughs> really? Nah, man, I'm just playing. Just two. Joke for him. He gets it. <laughs> the thing is, I don't know if Kobe knows this is supposed to be jokes. Like, I think they just told Kobe, do what you would normally do. Frank, are you intrigued? Oh, absolutely. Well played also by Kobe Bryant and Jalen Rose, because nothing drives Jalen Rose crazier than hearing how Kobe scored 81 against him. He scored a lot, not all of them. Also in development, by the way, the Paul Pierce show as well. Mm-hmm. Papi, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. But listen, I'm surprised that the Kobe ordered a martini. I thought that he only took shots. Oh, oh. wow. Oh. Like, what are we supposed to say after that? How can we top that? That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching. All right, thanks so much for joining us. We'll be back here tomorrow. See you manana. Manana. We'll get him there. 
Ring, ring, ring. Yeah? Hey, Dan, how you doing, buddy? What's going on? Are you enjoying yourself in Russia? Yeah? Hi, Frank, the new guy. I think that's going to take over your job. I don't think that you have to worry coming back anymore. Yeah? Doing a great job. Take care.